I looked like I was electrocuted. <laughs> oh my God, can you believe I'm here? I'm famous. <laughs> I am famous. I'm in the movie The Fighter. You guys are like, who are you? You have no idea. I'm famous. That's all you need to know. You know who I am, right? Famous? No? Do you recognize me? Come on, I've been on every canceled show that's ever been on TV. I'm so excited. You're supposed to be cool. You're in an Oscar-nominated movie. I'm like, I'm psyched. I'm so happy. They're like, Sue, take it down. I'm like, no. I've been on every canceled show that's ever been. I had my own sitcom. It was called Costello. It was on Fox. Did anybody ever see it? No, because it was canceled. <laughs> I was on Tough Crowd with Colin Quinn. Comedy Central, canceled. The show, it's not going to be on next week. And I'm from Boston. Who's from Boston? What part of Boston are you from? You from Boston too? What part? North Shore, that's like 40 minutes outside. That's like saying, who's from New, New York? I am, what part? New Jersey. <laughs> when I was up there, they told me I had a bad attitude that I need to work on myself because I couldn't get along with people. They said I was too hostile that I should go to therapy. I didn't need to go to therapy, I need to move to New York City. Because <laughs> now I fit right in. This place actually makes me look fluffy. <laughs> you know how when you're in the supermarket, those old ladies are like 140 years old, they fake like they don't know what they're doing and they cut in front of you? I slam right into them. <laughs> right in their ankles, get out of my way, Grandma, get out! And you can always tell an old lady from New York as opposed to like an old lady from the Midwest, because you go like this to them, screw you, they go, screw you harder. That's what I'm aspiring to become, an old lady from New York, just walking around swearing my head off at everybody, because that's our destiny, girls, right? We get old, guys, you get off the hook early, right? What happens, your heart explodes when you're like 50 or something, right? Right, it's like a tragedy until we realize we're gonna be roaming around the earth to a friggin' 3,000 years old. It's like some sick joke. I remember when I was little, my mother was like, Sue, eat the vegetables so you can grow old like grandma. I was like, no. Why would I want to do that so I could grow so old that eventually I'd just be completely bent in half? Oh, yeah, oh my God, this is so much fun. Could you give me some more broccoli, please? Come on, how about a carrot, anything? Maybe I can live a couple more years. You could just curl me up in a ball and bury me in a hat box, huh? And I'm Irish, we have any other Irish people here? One guy is like, I'm not saying it. <laughs> I'm shy, because we're not the brightest bulbs. Irish people never clap. We're never proud, because we're not so bright, right? I mean, come on, we almost died because our potatoes went bad. <laughs> we thought that was the only food, the potatoes went bad. We were like, screw it, let's get drunk and die. <laughs> and I'm Irish and Catholic, are you two? It's horrible, right? You get repressed with the sex. Not even supposed to think about it. Like, I can't even believe I shook my booty like that. I'm gonna go to hell. <laughs> Seriously, because you know, normally when you're Irish, could you guys, if you couldn't tell, but normally when I walk on stage, when I don't, you can totally tell I'm Irish Catholic because it physically, like, because I walk, I pull my vagina back just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me, all the Jewish girls are like, what is she talking about? <laughs> what is she talking about? <laughs> and Irish girls, we try to be sexy, but we can't because we have that nasty white Irish Catholic skin that breaks out and it blotches anytime we feel any emotion whatsoever. It's very sexy. You walk up to a guy, you're a little nervous, you got a big blotch on your neck, you're like, hi. How you doing? He's like, that's disgusting. What is that? Is that contagious? You look like a leper. Beat it. Get out of here. <laughs> one of my friends was getting married. In All right, it wasn't one of my friends. I'm going to tell you guys the truth because I'm famous now and I don't want to alienate. Like, I don't want to put too much of it. I want you to know that I'm still a person. So uh, they, one of the kids that used to whip acorns at me when I was little was getting married. So I was a loser. 
I had a horrible childhood. I had a lazy eye. This was my entire childhood. Hey! <laughs> hey, excuse me! You want to be my friend? Excuse me, I'm talking to you over there! Horrible. And my mother, I have a, my mother likes to drink, you know? Like, when you have, like, a impediment like that, you'd think you'd like to have a nice mother that, like, nurtures you. My mother, like, my mother drinks so much, like, when she does her quotes, she does them backwards. Like, you know how you do this? She does them like this. <laughs> so I never knew when she was going to wake up with a crazy idea, so I'd always try to watch TV with my one good eye, like, trying to stay out of trouble. And one night she wakes up, and there's a commercial on TV where a boy is coming out of Burger King after he got his haircut. A boy. And she wakes up and she's like, oh, that haircut will look good on Sue. Takes out a bowl and gives me a boy's haircut. So now, now I have a lazy eye and a boy's haircut, right? No, I show the picture to people now and they're like, who is that, Dustin Hoffman? <laughs> and then the way they corrected a the lazy eye is they gave you a patch, but it was like made out of Band-Aid and they covered the good eye. So the lazy eye would get strong. And it was just like the kids used to whip acorns at me. I couldn't even see them because of the patch. <laughs> And then she bought me these jeans, they were called Tough Skins. I don't know if anybody remembers them, but they were like five dolls and they were made out of concrete. <laughs> so now I got a lazy eye, a boy's hair, I got the whipping acorns at me, I can't run because of the Tough Skins. I'm like, just when I thought my life couldn't suck anymore, I went to the eye doctors and I find out not only am I nearsighted, but I'm farsighted too. How does that happen? I only have one good eye. <laughs> so I walk in, I see the pink Sergio Valente glasses on the wall. I'm like, oh my God, maybe the glasses are gonna make me cute. The eye doctor's like, no, son. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you're on welfare, so you have to wear the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar glasses. <laughs> so now I'm going back to this wedding, and I want to show off. My eyes all better. I look better. I go to TJ Maxx. I get one of those dresses, you know, they're like $4,000 marked down to $39.99. <laughs> I swear to God, that's the only place in America you can get a dress that gives you camel toe. I have no idea how it happened. It must have been a regular or something. I don't know what happened. <laughs> but I put the dress on, and it's like a halter top, and all my skin's showing. I got blotches all over me. I don't notice because I think I look hot. I walk into the wedding like this, expecting everybody to come up to me and be like, damn, Sue, you look good. Instead, they were like, oh, were you burnt in a fire? Ah, oh, Sue was burnt in a fire.